See the title? Is something strange? Can you take that down a little bit, uh, Bart? Maybe a tad bit. Here we go. Is something strange? Maybe a little more, just a tad bit. Is something strange? That's great. Something strange happening to us. I don't know about you, but I think we've been talking individually or as a group at different times. Uh, have you noticed that there seems to be an onslaught of health issues, uh, seemingly attacks or assaults on our health and well-being at Victory? It's amazing. Amen. And I'd like to take note that many have come out of these health trials, and I believe that are, are in the process of coming out, as, as Brad. And, uh, and I, so I, we see a lot of great things happening, but I think it was Wednesday, our Revelation class, we had 15 people we were praying for. Uh, some were for travel mercies and things, but it seems like we really got hit. And, uh, and it sometimes makes us wonder, just for a moment as a believer, you know, why me or why us? As though something strange was happening to us at Victory. We may ask this question, now what, is, what is this a result of? Sometimes when something goes wrong, we say, well, you know, Satan is really after us. We must be doing something right, you know. Or sometimes we say, well, what is God doing? Is, is he trying to get my attention or our attention? Um, and I think we need to be reminded of this. All these things that we've experienced at Victory, uh, maybe within our families, our homes, our extended families, within the church, is really the result of one event that started the whole war, if you will. And that was in the Garden of Eden, Amen. the fall. When sin entered the world and changed everything. Eden before that was a beautiful place. It was a peaceful place. Walked with God. And after the fall, we have pain, suffering, illness, disease, death, uh, came as a result of the fall of mankind in the Garden of Eden. And it really continues in us, right? Right? In fact, the Apostle Paul would write in Romans chapter 5, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, thank you, Adam, well, that's not in there, just I added that, and death through sin, and you blame Eve, so yeah, we have uh, Eve blamers and Adam blamers, uh, and death through sin, and in the way death came to all people, because all have sinned, right? All have sinned. When we share the gospel, we speak to the point that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yeah, yeah. Now, if that wasn't enough that we experience all these things as God's creation as human beings, well, what about tsunamis and earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and hurricanes or tornadoes? Because, see, what happened was creation itself got hit in the fall. Paul would write in Romans uh, chapter 8, for I consider that our present suffering cannot even be compared to the glory that will be revealed to us. Amen. For creation eagerly awaits for the revelation or the revealing of the sons of God, the sons and daughters of God. For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of God who subjected it in hope. That the creation itself will also be set free from the bondage of decay into that glorious freedom of God's children. For we know that whole creation, the whole creation groans and suffers together until now. See, the even creation, the earth, wants to be restored because of the fall. The dramatic effects that it had on everything. In fact, uh, we know that there will be a new heaven and a new earth because God is so faithful and the result of this was the first sin uh, that was uh, that happened in the garden and sin that still continues with us today sinners saved by grace but there's another result of the fall that we are so blessed and so excited and so happy to have and that is Jesus Christ Jesus Christ came to seek and save the lost. He is Isaiah's suffering servant, taking our sins on voluntarily. 
And we read Paul writes in Romans chapter 5, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still or yet sinners, Christ died for us. He also wrote in verse 18, Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, that's through Adam, so one righteous act through the second Adam, Jesus Christ, so also one righteous act resulted in the justification and life for all people who would receive Christ. I love this word justification or to be justified. It means this. It means that you are pronounced righteous even though you may be guilty. You've been acquitted. You are considered just by acquittal because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Through faith. Paul wrote this also in Romans uh, chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. For, or therefore, since we have been justified, there it is, through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this what? Grace. Because it is by grace we are saved through faith. Through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which now we stand and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Justification. We're justified. But justification is not an escape from the trials of this life. Jesus said to his disciples, also fallen people, and so often as we look at scriptures and we're talking about affliction and suffering and, and tribulation, we're talking about for our faith. Uh, such a huge, large portion of this, but also the very things we go through. Jesus said, in this world, you will have what? You will have trouble. You will have trouble. So we read that Paul writes, so, therefore, since we have been justified, pronounced, declared righteous, through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. But not only boasting in that, the idea of having, going to heaven, but we also glory in our sufferings. Am I going to hear an amen on that? Right? Yeah, uh -uh. But we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering <coughs> produces or achieves perseverance. We can say patience. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. Wow. Wow, character, hope. From one step to another, to another, to another, this, this type of sequence, this the sequence of events. There's a story, maybe you've heard about it, of a, of a farmer whose donkey stumbled into a dry well. For an hour, the animal was pitiful as he cried out for his farmer owner to figure out what to do. As the farmer was trying to think what he could possibly do, because it seemed impossible, he finally thought to himself and said, you know, the, the animal is old. He's probably really not worth retrieving. So the farmer invited all the neighbors to really fill up the, the dry well, to fill it up with dirt. So as they put the first shovel into the dry well, it hit the donkey on, the, on his back, and it took the donkey just a second, but the donkey knew what they were doing, and he cried out in panic. But then all of a sudden, what happened was it, begot, it became very quiet, strangely quiet. And the farmer looked down into the well and stopped in astonishment. Because what happened was, every shovel of dirt that hit the donkey's back, the donkey shook off and then stepped on that new earth. And the next shovel of dirt that hit his back, he sh shook it off and stepped on that new earth. All right. And more dirt hit him, he shook it off and stepped on that new earth, and so on and so on. And many shovels later, the donkey rose up to the edge of the well and trotted off. 
And we were joking around, is the donkey going to be okay, Uncle Larry? Yes, little Tommy, the donkey is going to be okay. You know, from WLS, Animal Stories. For those of you old enough to know of it. Okay. But here's the point. Uh, this idea of going through trials and things that appear to set us back, this idea of stepping and stepping and stepping and stepping and stepping. Uh, Dan Mayer, who was, uh, wrote something on this particular uh, scripture, uses the example of Paul, and I could not go through all of the, I didn't want to go through all the material that Paul had written about what he went through as he cataloged, but here's a few of them. Uh, Paul was beaten, stoned, three times shipwrecked, three times, in danger of bandits, in danger of Jews, in dangers of Gentiles, etc. He, he shook off the dirt, so to speak, and uh, just stepped and stepped and stepped, and then kind of, try, if you will, tried it off. Back to ministry. <laughs> they thought he was dead. He gets up and he goes back. See, there is not just a boast because of the hope of glory that we have that one day we will be in heaven with God and be in his presence, which is a wonderful thing. But we read not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance or patience. Perseverance in the original text talks about proven character. Proven character. And then that leads to hope. Proven character. You know, it's like this soldier who's been tried. It's one thing to talk about something. It's another thing to go through something. It's one thing to be, you know, to be tried and true, right? And that is what the scripture is talking about. Suffering produces a type of patience or, or perseverance, and that perseverance produces, when we go through it, a proven character that leads to hope. Tried and true, but how do you get to the tried and true? How do you get to the character without the trial? Amen. And thus the hope. Amen. And I probably will get every hand here but who, ha how many at some time in your past have asked God, Lord, please give me patience? Amen to that. And what did you get? Trials. <laughs> problems. You got troubles. Because those trials achieve or produce patience and perseverance and strength and that perseverance gives a proven character which leads to then hope. You can't take one of them out although I would certainly like to at times. Amen. One step and then another and then another and another another step and by the grace of God we wind up in this arena of hope even in difficult times. The spiritual glory, the trials, physical, emotional, the afflictions, the trouble. Uh, there is a spiritual glory because we understand, we have come to know through this, that the end product of the chain reaction must begin with distress, but it, it will end with hope. Not only so, but we also glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. Oh, I, I was supposed to click that earlier, so let me go ahead. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who God has given to us. And let's just go back, I, let's look at this. This is sort of the, uh, the sequence of trial, patience, which produces a proven character, which equals hope. Does that make sense? Amen. Make sense? Just as result of the fall created these adverse experiences for us, and really for all of creation, it has also produced 
a loving Savior, Jesus Christ, the loving Savior, who can empathize with us, who knows what we go through, who can lead us, who can save us, and who can help us with our confidence in these situations as we approach God and have a confidence. Hebrews 4, the writer writes, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are yet. He did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So even though we are saved by grace through faith, and we wait for this, this glory of being with the Lord in heaven, we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ who came to a fallen world, should we be surprised as though something strange is happening to us? Really, should we be surprised? Because even though we are justified, acquitted, pronounced uh, righteous, even though we're justified, we are not exempt from the results of the fall. Not yet. And I need to be reminded, maybe we need to be run, reminded occasionally, as we read about the suffering in the Bible, the vast majority of it, so much of it was because of our faith. Although I know Jesus understands what we go through in our daily troubles and strife, our tribulations, our afflictions. First Peter, uh, Peter wrote this and it brings so much into perspective. He wrote, in the, looking at every form of trials, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that some of that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as your participation in the suffering of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you're blessed. For the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief or any kind of criminal, or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed. But praise God that you bear the name. And I think our last scripture that we look at today is from James, who also says this so beautifully. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. You see the many kinds? I think that wraps up all of it. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance, which we know leads to a proven character, which we know equates to hope. James continues, verse 4, Let, us per let's, uh, let per perseverance finish this work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. In verse 12, Blessed is the one who perseveres under the trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to him, to those who love him. Wow. This sort of reset my, my thinking. So that whether we're looking at things that are going on individually or corporately as a church, at work, among family members, among friends, whatever the case may be. These trials and troubles, health issues, um, is it something that is so strange that we should be surprised? The answer is no. We are saved, we've been justified by Christ, but at least at this time, it does not exempt us from the trials of life. Even the world, creation, is groaning and waiting for a restoration. New heaven and a new earth. 
for the revealing of God's children. And when I take his, all of his creation, when I think of, uh, for those of us who are made in his image and likeness, and for all of creation really suffering this, this same type of uh, affliction, so to speak, waiting and waiting, John 3.16 just brings, just has a, more of a clarity for me. Think about it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever would you say whosoever with me? Whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Which is our end result. It is our hope. 